that's 365 days times two yeah. that I was weary yeah. and I was faint and I was frustrated yeah. and I was so anxious. There were days when I would lay in my bed, I'm not kidding you, and I'd put worship music under my ear and I would just say the word Jesus over and over again. Hey everybody, we're back with Waves Ministry Podcast, season eight. We are so excited. Um, hi, Holly, we want to welcome you. Hello, thank you so much for having me. Guys, excited to be here. Holly Myers, we are so excited to have her on. She's been a, she's not a new face to the podcast. She's been on the podcast mm -hmm. a few times now, but um, we are on this new season called On Wings of Eagles, Testimonies of Rising Above and Soaring Above Storms. And Holly is a pastor her and her husband pastor a church up in north carolina she has a ministry called unbound girls ministry i had the joy of speaking at her girls conference back a few years mm -hmm. ago right before i met this guy and mm -hmm. i also just have to say like she is a phenomenal writer she's written several books she mm -hmm. um writes for lifeway girls she is just an awesome and she's a fun girl mm -hmm. and she loves disney who doesn't love disney so <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Holly, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, absolutely. So I do love Disney a <laughs> lot. Um, actually, I'm leaving tomorrow to go on vacation. To Disney. Um, but I am married my high school sweetheart. He, we, we fell in love, literally. I met him like three weeks before my senior year of high school. He walked into a church and I had a boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And I looked at my friend and I, I said, that. I'm going to. I'm going to marry him. And so I broke up with my boyfriend that night. And uh, actually, I told my boyfriend to go to Burger King and told Richard to go to Taco Bell. And I went to Taco Bell. And so I broke up with my boyfriend and we fell in love. That before. That's, that's so funny. Yeah. And so we fell in love. Um, and luckily, I we had moved to a new school my senior year of high school because I had a huge house fire when I was in sophomore in high school and we lost everything pretty much but I met him my senior year of high school I always say he was part of my rescue for sure I fell head over heels in love with him and we've been together for 31 years we've been wow. together since 1992 wow. which is so crazy and then we have two daughters Rebecca who is 26 who is engaged to be married we're in the middle of planning a wedding and then Rachel is 21 and she just actually got home from Africa and she feels called to like foreign mission. So we, I love both of my girls. They're opposite ends of the spectrum. The way that I describe their personalities is when they were both in high school, Rebecca was the Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz and Rachel was behind the curtain doing the road. Like that's, that's the, so, that's, that's their, so that's fun. such a good it's a lot of fun. analogy. I like it's, that. But, that's literally their personality, but um, they both love Broadway. They both love a lot of the same things too. So it's really cool to see that. I have two Pomeranians who are probably going to bark. And when the mailman comes, I apologize already. Okay. Um, but it's just, they're, they're just, that's, yeah, life. that's life. That's life. We may have a baby yeah, cry. You yeah. never know. You never know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, I love coffee dates. I love girls ministry a whole lot. It's one thing I love about Caroline is I feel like the Lord, I always think about our friendship being like a David and Jonathan friendship. Mm -hmm. It was like, I remember the day that I talked to you for the first time. It was like yeah. the Lord connected our spirits. And so that's one thing that I really, really, one thing if you know about me is I value and cherish like deep, genuine friendship. Mm -hmm. And so that's a little bit about me. Um, I love to travel. I love coffee. My favorite food is beans. Like I love <laughs> black. That's I so eat, funny. I want to eat beans at every meal. My husband wants steak. I want beans. And that's, we're just so different, but that's okay. You make but. it work. It's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Well, on this season, like Caroline said, we've been doing, we've been talking about testimonies of rising above, soaring on the wings of eagles. And so mm -hmm. as we start every episode off, we always have a fun little question that we always ask. So this year or this season, I should say, what we're asking is what's your favorite song to listen to when you're trying to get kind of pumped up? Oh my goodness. It's so funny. Cause I was asking Richard, I was like, what do I listen to when I'm trying to get pumped up? He's like, ice, ice baby. And I'm like, Maybe. Ice Ice That's Baby. A good one. I mean, it is such a good one. I think anything with eighties, like if I'm doing a, like if I'm doing a road trip, or if I'm about to exercise, or if I'm just like being out by the pool, or if I'm about to walk on stage, it's like I love some good eighties music. And it's funny because <laughs> I, I would never admit that to my husband, but like I love like, like Africa, like Toto Africa. Uh -huh, I, like, uh -huh. I mean, I don't think you never heard the, that song till I came yeah. into his life. <laughs> New Kiss on the Block. I mean, Die Hard, New Kiss on the Block fan. Um, Millie Vanilli, which is so funny. And I was a big <laughs> Def Leppard fan back that's in the 90s. That's amazing. That is so funny. I mean, so I think anything that's got like, I love pop. Like some people hate pop. 
I'm not like in like today's pop girl, but I love yeah. me some like old school like JT. Like I like some yes. old like top school. So I like that kind of stuff. Fun. Love That's it. Fun. That's so a lot of fun. fun. That is so good. I love. If I'm going the if I'm going the Christian way, I'm going to say Lecrae. I'm going to say yeah, all, those Manio, things. all those things. Yeah. Yes, all that. Yeah, okay, so sure. As we think about like storms in life and like, man, I don't know about you, but sometimes I can mm-hmm. just like feel a storm of brewing. Like I can <gasps> just feel like, okay, something's shifting, mm-hmm. something's on the horizon. Um, it, Michael gave a great analogy of just like, whenever you're driving, like on the interstate and you see rain up ahead and you're like, oh, I'm about to go through that. Like sometimes mm-hmm. you can feel it brewing and sometimes they just kind of pop up out of nowhere, like a tornado. Right. And so right. like storms are are different. Mm-hmm. Um, but whenever you think of storms in your life that you faced, what is a storm that you, when is the time that you felt it coming and how did you prepare yourself as you headed into that storm? Oh my goodness. I can think of so many things, but as the first thing that came to my mind was at the beginning of 2020, I remember going in to that year, we had a women's retreat the very next day. I think everything shut down. Mm-hmm. And I did not know that my my husband was praying for God to prune us to which I told him like from here Dangerous on out, he was, like give me heads up, please. <laughs> but like he was asking God to prune us not only as a church but like individually, all those things. And I felt it, but didn't know that's what he was even praying. I felt yeah. this like this shifting. Well, actually, one Sunday in worship before we moved to our new location, everything, I was like praying in worship and I saw this like massive cruise ship and I could see it like going so hard in the water, mm-hmm. but I could watch the boat like turning and going, a, going away from where it was supposed to dock. Wow. And I'm like, Whoa, what does that even mean? And I didn't understand mm-hmm. that for a long time. And then we moved into our new location and a lot of things began to like shift in our, in our church, just, and personally in my life, um, Rachel became suicidal. Um, we lost a lot of like deep friendships over Richard standing on some hard truths within our church. People walked away from their faith completely. They've been so close to me. And I did not see those things coming. It was one of those things where like, I felt like I got blindsided. Kind of like you were saying, like you see the storm, you're like, yeah. oh, maybe it's going to go around you. And all of a sudden there's hell and there's like storm and lightning. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't, I did not have a chance to prepare for that storm mm-hmm. other than I saw it coming and I felt it in my spirit, but I didn't know the gravity of that storm. If that makes yeah. sense at all. I'm like, yeah. I thought it was going to be like a little bit like, just looks going to rain. Oh, I got this. Right. But mm-hmm. I watched myself begin. My prayers to shift. Mm-hmm. My prayers begin to change from God. Don't stop the storm. Just help me to carry me through the storm. That's Give me okay. strength to get through that storm. It was literally, I would sit and, and listen to worship music and sobbing and weeping i was grieving friendships i was w- trying to understand the the mental health of rachel i was trying to understand like is it something i did wrong um do i do what am i the way i'm interpreting god's word is this really like am i doing this the right way i mean there was so many i feel like so many different things coming at one time and the only thing i knew to do was to go to my knees during that season and i have I felt like I could only go down. Like I, there was no further down I could go other than on my face before God. And then after a while, it was like, okay, now I can get on my knees. Mm-hmm. Okay, now maybe mm-hmm. I can try to stand up. So I think preparing for that storm, preparing for that, the outcome of what that storm was going to entail took me, honestly, going so deep into God's word and allowing myself to shut out voices and clutter and noise. And looking back now, I know, like I, I can remember seeing the hand of God, almost like saying, "No, let's don't go this way. Let's don't go in that place of of an insecurity. Let's don't go back to that old way of eating. Hey, let's no, nope, let's go this way. That that I'm That's taking good. you in a place of newness. Yeah. And so I think that a lot of that of my preparing for the storm was me honestly on my face and crying out to God a lot. And and sometimes I didn't think he even heard me. I'm like, God. This is somebody that I've known my whole life or this person I've been mentoring since they were 14. What happened? Like, right. and I would, I would literally take it back to myself and he would say, that's pride, get it off of you and get it onto me. And I felt like that was a lot of my preparation was 
is getting myself out of the way. Wow. Good. That's so good. That's really well, good. You know, on the flip side of the that though, like what would be a time that you actually something just kind of popped up out of nowhere and it kind of and and where you'd have a harder time preparing and it's more it requires an immediate response rather than preparation. So in that in that process of 2020 to 2020 um to Richard had a massive heart attack and this is one of those things where we move into a new brand new building. We purchased a bit, not brand new, but we redid a building, a church building, and we moved into it. We had all these dreams. Like we were, we could feel the shifting. That's why Richard began to prune, ask God to prune our, us and of people and relationships of everything. So we're moving and we're like, oh my goodness, this is going to be the year. Oh my word, it's going to be amazing. And so Richard goes up on the stage and he preaches the first sermon, the second sermon. He goes downstairs, feels a little bit dizzy, preaches the second sermon. Sermon. The next thing I know that night we're in the hospital and they're like, you have three of the four blockages. You're going to have to have major open heart surgery. And it's like, everything stops. Like yeah. I had to, I'm talking, I mean, it was funny because the day he had triple bypass surgery, I had already been um, contracted to speak at an event that was like four, almost four and a half hours away. And so I said, you know what? They cannot get anybody new. I need somebody to come sit with Richard. I need to get in my car. I need to drive this event. I drove to the event, got out on stage, spoke a word, got back in my car and drove back to Richard. And it was one of those things where I was so blindsided. But when I tell you that I put my hands up and I said, God, I surrender Richard to you. I don't understand what you're doing. I can't comprehend it. My heart can't not take loss, but I'm going to choose to trust you. It was like a piece that just came over me, even so much so that we were sitting in the hospital one night and I was just holding Richard's hand and my daughter was in the room and I said, I need you to understand. Like he, he had just come off the ventilator. He was, he was not doing really great at the beginning. And I, I said to her, you've got to surrender your father. And she was like, I need you to stop saying that word surrender. I want him to walk me down the aisle. And <laughs> I, like, I, needed I don't to want to surrender. <laughs> right? no, no. Like, what are you talking about? And we made like jokes. Cause I would say, no, honey, after he got, I'm like, no, honey, no, if something happens, I'm going to go move to another country. I need you to know that. Okay. <laughs> and he was like, don't put me in the ground. And it was like a funny joke for a little bit. But the thing about it is that because that storm blindsided me, I personally believe, like I think about the Eagle and the eagle is the is the one bird that almost like finds its power in the soar because of a storm. It right. hits the wings so hard so that it can go up and go so long, right? Mm -hmm. And if yeah. I wouldn't have went so through good. that storm right before, like think about all the turmoil that I went through leading up to Richard's heart attack. Wow. I don't know that my faith wouldn't have been shaken. Like I had been a season on my face before God. It was like he was preparing me for the storm that was going to knock the, my feet out from underneath me, but it didn't. It gave me a peace. And people would say, Holly, you're so calm. And I'm like, it's because I trust God mm -hmm. with hands empty. Like in Philippians, this is with hands empty or with hands, hands full. Like I'm content in the Lord. And if that means I lose everything and I am fall apart, then my heart was not fully satisfied in the Lord. And so I think that knowing that going, like the, having that my breath not out, knocked out of me, did I cry? Yes. Did mm -hmm. I worry? Yes. But there was a sense of peace that I can't even like verbalize to you because it was that peace that surpasses the human knowledge or the human That's brain. Right. Like, I, I can't understand it. That's and because of that, I truly believe that my daughters were able to look to me and say, wow, like mom's not falling apart. Therefore, we can't, we were not going to fall apart. And that's so I think that was good. a, so good. that's the first thing that came to my mind because that was one of those storms right. we had to say, okay, who's preaching for the next eight weeks? Right. You know, yeah. how, how am I going to keep my house? Stuff. Right. <laughs> yes. It was the day-to-day -day things that I take so for granted that suddenly were in front of my face of like, okay, all right appointments who's going to help change his wounds like it was like and with the, the lord is so good mm -hmm. y'all that his pt person and his nurse that were assigned to him were members of our church like oh who that's does that amazing. right that's awesome. and so was, god can do that yes it was only god and the people just jumped around us and i'm that person 
for many years, I'm a stuffer of my emotions. And like Richard, when we first got, got married, he would say, Holly, you've got to communicate with me. And I'm like, no, I don't. I don't want to talk to you for three days. Let me go into my room. I'll come out in three days. But he's like, no, you have to use words. We have to like process this. I'm like, oh, my mm -hmm. word. But it was so good because <laughs> I was able to just sit with him. And he was able to say things like, Holly, I feel really anxious today. Mm -hmm. Or Hey, I feel like what if something happens and I don't wake up tomorrow? Like it was the sweetest transition in our marriage. I mean, everything about that season, he would probably say it was the hardest season of his life, but the, what it did for our marriage, our family, even our church family, the depth of like getting things in order was so beautiful. It was That's so, so beautiful on the other side of that. That's so good. Like when you were talking, it made me think of that scripture from Isaiah 40, 31 that talks about you know, waiting on the Lord and renewing our strength and how mm. mount up on wings like eagles, um, just mm. how love those storms, you know, I, I, you just shared of a storm, you know, where you found yourself kind of soaring above it in a lot of ways and staying grounded in peace. Like what were some practical things that helped mm. you stay grounded in peace in the midst of that storm and keep that heavenly perspective? Well, I love this verse so much. And I want to back up to one verse, a couple of verses, because it says in verse 28, it says, have you not known, have you not heard the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. And the Israelites in this part, in this season were, they were faint. They were weary. It was one of those hard moments. And so I think for me, a practical thing is to remind yourself of not only of God's truth, but the, the creator of the universe does not get faint and weary. He doesn't. That's right. He doesn't get and tired. So he doesn't get tired. <laughs> so he wasn't, he wasn't suddenly surprised when the doctor says Richard had a heart attack, like you're going to have to have open, open heart surgery. He wasn't caught off guard by the things or the storms yeah. of this life. And whether the storm is caught, brought on by sins and consequences or by just like something else happening in our lives, right. me knowing and believing but understanding like a head knowledge and heart knowledge are so different like I can quote scripture all day long mm -hmm. but until I allow God's word to like become wrapped around my heart yes, and me right. truly believe that truth that God is not weary he is not faint and he it will he will carry me in the valley and he will put me up on the mountaintops mm -hmm. in this season that, that I'm meant to be there and so I just I just think that that scripture it's so just a good reminder that he is an everlasting God. He's going to, he's going to outlast that storm yeah. and he's going to outlast the weariness that you're feeling. And sometimes our weariness lasts for a really long time. Like I feel like from 2020 to 2022, that's 365 days times two yeah. that I was weary yeah. and I was faint and I was frustrated yeah. and I was so anxious. There mm -hmm. were days when I would lay in my bed. I'm not kidding you. And I'd put worship music under my ear. And I would just say the word Jesus over and over because I would be in a fetal position, having panic attack, like sobbing my eyes out. And nobody knew that. Nope. I didn't right. tell anybody for like seasons, like months later mm -hmm. that I would lay in the bed and just like say, Jesus, Jesus. And I would pray that God would, and, and I would fall asleep, but it wouldn't be like right off the bat. So like, mm -hmm. it really is so those good. things where like what you're putting in your ear who you're allowing to speak into your life, the things that you're, that you're putting into, like it says the light of our eyes gives way to this, our souls. Right. Yeah. So right. what am I putting into my eyes? What am I, who am I like allowing into that, the intimate place of my life? That's a tangible thing to be careful who you're allowing in to speak into yeah. your life. And um, so that, that for me, that, that was it. Like it was those seasons where I had to, post like God's word anywhere that I could see it. Yeah. That because there's that whole thing about like unbelief. Sometimes mm -hmm. I think unbelief doesn't really surface to your in a jam, to your in a storm. You're like, yeah. oh just even and today like, I, you're like, oh yeah. <laughs> literally like I today I was studying the names of God and the the name Jehovah Rapha, like the 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 Lord who heals. Well, if I'm honest, there sees it there was a part of me, I'm like, God, are you really gonna heal Rachel from this? Like Will she commit suicide? Are you going to heal her mental health? Are you really going to heal this, this like this hurt that I have deep in me from losing a friendship? It's like, mm. 
I had to repent of those things. Like I had right. to repent. And so I think repentance led me to a place to, to allow me to show me, hey, this is where you believe that God is real and true and just, and he's authentic and he loves me in those seasons, mm-hmm. or I don't believe those things. And so right. repentance led me to that, but also allowing the things that what I'm listening to, what I'm keeping in front of me and like consistent places of like worship and studying God's word was so, so, so tangible for me. That's wow. amazing. Wow. That's awesome. You said something that I I say from time to time, and it's about how God's never caught off guard with mm-hmm. our circumstances. Like right. things that seem all of a sudden to us, God's like, I'm not surprised by this. And a lot right. of times you can find peace in the peace of God by just hiding in the fact that God's sovereign, God knows, and he, and he knows, he knows the end from the beginning. He knows exactly what's going to happen. And, Mm. and, and, and if we can just, if we trust what God is trying to do and trying to show us in those seasons, it, it, there's, there's like, okay, God, I don't want to be in this season for that long. So like, what are you trying to show me so I can get out of this season? (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, right. I think that our eyes, oftentimes are so on how big the raindrops are, how mm-hmm. big the, the damage of the storms it can cause. Like, I mean, last week we had a massive storm, which I know Florida probably did too, had a massive storm come through. Mm-hmm. And I'm not on social media right now, so I don't know anything that's going on in the world. Like my kids love me on everything. Mm-hmm. But Rick, my mom called and said, hey, don't forget to put your umbrellas down. And there was a preparation that had to happen in order for things not to fly away. But there's a mindset when we go to that place of like, hey, preparing my soul to understand the, the truth that, that God is not caught off guard. Mm-hmm. Even more than that, like he could stop it. But even more than that, he is trying to pull something out of us or put something into us. Right. right. He's trying to, to mold and shape us to be more like him. And I think that if our eyes would get off the storm and get on the yeah. eyes of the creator that allowed the storm to be, then it would shift our right. perspective. Yeah. It would deepen our faith and it would yeah. really increase our intimacy with him. That's well, good. when those storms arise, what are some of the temptations that you face um, mm-hmm. during those storms? Goodness. I think number one is um, questioning the um, the power of God. <laughs> I think for me, because I struggled with food addiction and eating disorders in college and like early into my adulthood, I think it would be easy to run back to a box of donuts because that's a tangible fix for me. Like, oh, this made me feel good and this tastes delicious, but it doesn't satisfy or help the storm in any capacity. Right. I just feel it makes a bigger storm. But I think running back to old uh, thought patterns, running back to old ways of life. Um, and shutting your Bible and saying, you know what, God, I don't believe that you're doing a good job. I think I can do better. Um, almost trying to like take the reins and taking God off the throne to put self on the throne, um, thinking that you can do better. Those are tangible things to me. I feel like that a lot of people get in that place of temptation to, that they say, I can do it better. That's right. Mm, That's That's right. Mm -hmm. So now that you're on the other side of both of those storms you talked about, <laughs> like in hindsight, like when you look back, you're like, what was the Lord trying to teach me in those storms? What was the Goodness. Lord trying to teach you? I, when I tell you that I have so much freedom, I always say this a lot. It's like whatever you're dealing with, whatever that thing is, that insecurity, that weakness, that addiction on the other side of that is so much freedom. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I think to myself a lot, like when the Israelites came out of Egypt, the fact that they begged to go back there because they were hungry makes me like so infuriated by them. But goodness, are we not like that a lot? Like what we just talked about. But it's one of those things where the freedom that I have in my relationships now and like friendships, the the boldness and the conversations of like, even like a couple of weeks ago, I asked a friend, how can I be a better friend to you? Is there an area in my life that I'm not holding up my end of the bargain in the place of friendship? Do you feel seen by me? Do I need to care for you in a different way? Those are conversations yeah. that I weren't was not having prior to 2020. Yeah. I just assumed that they knew that I loved them, or I assumed that I knew where they were spiritually. Now it's like, hey, what are you dealing with? What are you struggling with? How can I get into that pit with you? And let's do this together. And that's not right. point you to the cross. Let me walk you to the cross. Right. You know, that type of thing. It's like, I want to be able to, to love people uh, so much differently. And I'm also now not afraid to, to verbalize what I need because I feel like 
growing up, I was such in a place because my dad left me when I was a kid, boys and like friendships were such rooted in approval that there was not, there was, it was more fake intimacy than like genuine intimacy. Mm -hmm. And so now I hunger for those things. So be able to be able to have a conversation with someone and then say a hard truth to me and yeah. me not be offended and run from it. But now I, I want to say, oh, okay, well, that's how you felt. Mm -hmm. Well, let me share my heart with behind this, or let me share you okay. how God's word got me to this place or those types of things. Right. So I think that my friendships are a hundred percent different yeah. and my relationships are so much more sweeter and genuine. And I, I love people. And I also have the freedom that I've, I've learned to where to put people in my life. I know that sounds crazy, but I think sometimes as being a pastor's wife or like, you know, Caroline, like speaking, it's easy to let people come really, really close to you because you want to be authentic and genuine. Right. And I've learned the the fruit and keeping people in certain seats, right? Yeah, like, yeah. hey, yeah. I yeah. get yeah. to love on you and pour into you, but I'm going to keep you right there. And that's okay because I'm still love you. And I still, so I've learned how to, to, to navigate that in my life right now. And then I think the other thing is that the, the holy and the reverence of God in my life of, on this side of freedom is so beautiful. Like I don't, fear man because I'm in all of God. Yeah. And I think Good. that's been a huge piece of twist, like a hurricane coming at me or a, a, whatever it is with whether it be physical harm or emotional pain, whatever that is on the other side of that is God. And he's yeah. not afraid of it. He's not scared of it. Even more than that, he brings healing to us. And I think that for me on this side of, I have a healed heart. I have a new perspective of relationships and friendships. I love my man more now than I ever have. He is fine <laughs> and I love him. Awesome. Um, but also even more like my relationships with my daughters are so different. And being an adult, okay. having adult daughters is different anyway, but it's something different. Like I just have a new grounded, deep, founded love for God's word in this season of my life than I ever have. And I think I was told that to my life group this morning, like Holly 2020 was, you know, lucky go, you know, love everybody. I want to make sure I spend coffee dates with everybody. How can you all, can I all pull you in to now? It's like God has shifted me and he aligned me with the spirit and said, Hey, I need you to keep your eyes on me and I'll put in front of you who you're going to pour into in this season. And it has just shifted and changed me. I am a free woman. Free. You're free. I, am I free. think he's going to go get our baby and bring her over here. She I'm is so glad. trying to be on the podcast. No, also, I'm this so is glad. my Valentine's tree, not a regular, not a Christmas tree. Hey, I love it. Uh, I see your heart in the pillow. So I knew. You, okay. Right. I was like, I, I was like, there are hearts yeah. on this tree, by the way. Uh, Holly, no, I love what you were saying about that though, because it, it's one of those things that whenever we allow God to transform us in the midst of a storm, we come yeah. to the other side with new faith and new, mm. we're, we're made new. It's almost yes. like the storm that came to destroy us actually helped us rediscover who he is and who right. we are. Um, so how have you seen God's faithfulness in the midst of that storm? Like when, when you think of that, you just, cause I mean, a storm, like you know that he is faithful. He's not going uh -huh. to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. How did you see, um, here's baby princess coming over here. Um, <laughs> how did it likely me make your debut to uh, the Waves Ministry podcast? Um, <laughs> I love it. I um, love it. How did you see God's faithfulness in the midst of that of those storms? Wow. I think the first thing that, you know, came to my mind, I, me studying the names of God, you know, Jehovah and Nisi was like, the Lord is my banner. Mm -hmm. And I think about in Exodus where Moses and they're, they're going to battle and Aaron is up there and they're, and they're holding up their arms. But there's a picture in my brain of this banner when during times of war. When they would hold up banners, it was for the for them to to look and say, okay, this is the king that we're fighting for. That's this right. is the kingdom we're fighting for. But Moses held up the staff as a representation of God's presence and his power. Mm -hmm. And I think to me, looking back in that season of God's faithfulness, that is the banner that I feel like I was up underneath was his faithfulness, with his steadfast yeah. love. That was Every time I would open up God's word, I would see the word steadfast. I'm like, what are you doing? This is not <laughs> even my this is not even my work for the year. But he was like trying to show me 
the steadfast love of God is in every single element, every season, every moment of my life. It is unchanging. And, and in those very changing, desperate moments, the faithfulness of God does not change. The word of God does not change. The only thing that happens is I'm changed through it. That's what, that's, that's what's happening in the, in the midst of it. So I think that was for me was being under the banner of God's faithfulness and his steadfast love. It did something to my soul. It really did. I love so that. Good. Thank you so much for sharing about your storms and how God worked and moved in the midst of those. Um, I know that there are girls and, and people watching that want to follow you, want to keep up with you. I know that you're not on socials right now, but who knows? By February, you may be back. Um, this is true. This is true. <laughs> um, where can people follow you? Where can um, where can people uh, follow you and your ministries? Mm -hmm, absolutely. So we, um, Holly H. Myers is my Instagram tag, and that's how you can find me on Facebook as well. It's funny because yesterday I was I was reading, and I'm doing the names of God, and so there's about I think like. 17 or 18 more names I'm going through. And I heard the Lord because I've been asking every day. I'm like, Lord, when are you going to release me back into the wild social media? And, right. but he, I heard him say at the end of this book, I want, I, I, I just, he just, he, right now he just needs me to sit with him. And I, but I can't wait because I feel like I'm missing out on everything. And so, <laughs> What's going uh, on? Not, not, not like on the drama of like side of social media, but somebody said the day, like, did you do that really cute such and such? I'm like, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. Um, like but uh, Holly H. Myers on social media for sure. And then um, hollyhmyers.com is my website. It's actually about to go into this huge like revamping because the book's coming out in May. So I'm trying to. It's coming out in May. Finally. Right after, before like, the conference too. Yes. I didn't think about that. Wow. Crazy. Okay. That's Boom. cool. What's the name yeah. of the book? Protect What You Cherish by Guarding What You've Been Given. I love that. I learning to your that. weakness, learning to use your weakness as a weapon. That That's is good. amazing. I'm so yeah. excited to read it. That's cool. I'm excited. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Holly. We really appreciate you being on the podcast and just yeah. sharing thank your you both. experience. So yeah. guys, uh, we will see y'all next time. Bye. Bye, Bye y'all.